In this screencast, we're going to cover two concepts that are kind of related. That is molecular weight and that of mass percent. So we've already talked about molecular formulas and that kind of stuff. And we've talked about how the atomic, the, the non-zero, the non-integer number on our periodic table for each particular element is the mass of one mole of that element in units of grams. So it's not too hard to figure out that the molecular mass is the mass of one mole of a particular molecule. So for example, water, two hydrogens, one oxygen. We know we look on our periodic table that the mass of one mole of hydrogen atoms is 1.01 grams, and the mass of one mole of oxygen is 16.00 grams. Just want you to note what I actually said. 1.01 grams for hydrogen and 16.00 grams for oxygen. Even, even though neither one of those are the numbers you're going to find on your periodic table. I rounded it to the hundredth place. That's just what I do. Because we can sit there and go whole hog wild and do five, six significant figures. There are some elements on the periodic table. We know the, the atomic mass to the five significant figures and that's way more than we need. So for our purposes, we round to the hundredth place for each individual element. If you want to go more than that, perfectly fine, but you can't go less than the hundredth place for my class. So to figure out the mass of one mole of a molecule, it's relatively easy. I just add up the individual masses of all the things in there. So it is H2O, and so I have two moles of hydrogen. Each mole of hydrogen weighs 1.01 grams. So I've got a total of 2.02 grams coming from the hydrogen. And there's one oxygen. Each one of those weighs 16 grams. So I get a mass for one mole of water of 18.02 grams. Here is a mass of water, and here is a number of water molecules. And I now technically have a conversion factor between the mass and the number of molecules. That's awesome. It's a conversion factor. It's an equality. Just like density is a conversion factor between mass and volume, molecular weight, or formula mass, or molecular mass, all mean the same thing, is a conversion factor between the mass and the number of molecules. So now what we can actually do is rudimentary unit conversions. If I want to convert 2.54 mole of water into grams of water, that's easy enough to do because I know the conversion factor that one mole of water is 18.02 grams. I put it in this orientation because I want moles of water to cancel out. Notice here I have M-O-L-E and here I don't have an E. You'll see them both ways. That's why I actually put it in both ways so you can actually see an E, no E, no, it means the same thing. Mole of water cancels out and I've effectively converted moles of water into grams of water. Now the reason why this concept of converting grams to moles is going to be really, really important is when we do balanced chemical equations, the balanced chemical equation relates the actual number of moles, actual number of molecules, which we usually count in moles, of particular species, where in the laboratory we can't actually, it's pretty much impossible for us to measure actual numbers of molecules, but it's very easy for us to measure masses of things in the laboratory. So we'll be able to go back and forth between a measured quantity, how much I actually have in my lab or in my beaker or in my whatever, and how many molecules there are. So this conversion going from moles to grams, grams to moles, is going to happen a lot, very common. Now, sort of as a corollary to this, is the concept of mass percent. And mass percent is defined as the mass of a particular atom in a particular molecule divided by the total mass of the molecule. And this is easy, easy enough explained by just looking at one simple example. And that is determining the percent by mass, or mass percent, of nitrogen in the compound ammonia. Essentially just what percentage of an ammonia molecule, what percentage of the mass is nitrogen. Not too hard. So for we look in our molecule that we have 14 for one mole of ammonia, and that's the easiest way to look at it, is one mole. One mole of ammonia, the molecular weight is 14 0.01 plus 1.01 for each hydrogen. So the total mass is 17.04. And we divide that from 14.01, which is the mass of the nitrogen in the system. So I take those, I have to multiply by 100% because it's a percent. And we get 82.22% by mass nitrogen. Now, you should know that if I wanted to calculate, if I also wanted to know what the mass percent of hydrogen was, um, since there's only nitrogen and hydrogen in there, I could simply subtract 100 from 
or subtract this 82.22 from 100, and that would give me the mass percent by hydrogen, which become important a little bit later. If we look at the percent oxygen and sulfur trioxide, the only difference here is that we have to make sure that we account for all of the oxygen in our compound. So in this case, if I want to know the percent mass of oxygen in sulfur trioxide, I actually have to take three times the mass of the individual 16, because there's three oxygens. So that's 48 divided by 80 grams for the total mass, and I get a mass percent of 59.95. And again, since this compound only contains sulfur and oxygen, it'd be easy enough for us to figure out uh, the 40.05% uh, by mass sulfur. Yeah, that easy. And that's how you calculate mass percent.